here we are. Oh, I missed the opening song. Oh, well, hey, Consular, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, last one, time one problem was... I, I found with the election, the only problem I found with the election, uh, not that the people who won or didn't win, is that I could not find, and I looked all over, uh, the results of the final after they counted the mm -hmm. uh, mail-ins and everything else yep. and give a lay down of everything, you know. Yeah, uh, no. They should either post it in the Eagle or on I Berkshire. I Berkshire mainly because, I mean, I go to I Berkshire three, four, five times a day to find things out. I mean, you know. Yeah, and no. the only time I buy the Eagle is during fishing season. Mm -hmm. So, so <laughs> he's got that. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I get the Eagle, and boy, it's pretty sparse. You get uh, pretty sparse. But, yeah, no, I agree. I uh, I was trying to look up the uh, official result to get, you know, the, the mail-ins, those weren't added in, and uh, they got to be counted, then they got to be certified, but they still should have a final final tally. I mean, every vote counts, so post yep. it, see what's every going on. Every vote counts and count every vote. Yes, yes, vote yes. Vote often and yep. vote early and vote often. Who said yeah. that? Was that Wendell know. Wilkie or somebody? Yeah, uh, vote and vote often, yeah. Well, at least Phil voted, you know. Mm -hmm. Phil gave you a, a, a vote. Yep, appreciate it. Appreciate all the people who supported me out there for both. And I was just at a... Oh, that's right, too. Both. Fundraiser for uh, John Barrett. Uh, a lot of people there. And, uh, How he, come I didn't get a notice? I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know. But it was very well, very well attended. It was on a garage seat. It's still going on now. Uh, just to get ready for the next uh, next election for him, or just for state rep, he's done a fine job. Uh, yes, he is doing a good job, and, and I like his uh, comments on I Berkshire mm -hmm. and on Facebook. His Facebook site is is good. He puts some interesting things on, you know, things you would never hear about unless he put it on for the community to mm -hmm. hear. Yeah. yeah. So keep it up, John. Yeah, so he was saying, and I've, I've heard from other people, <clears throat> there's a bit of a controversy about me getting both positions. And for those who weren't on the election uh, election night, the reason I went for both positions is my, my initial intention was to run for school committee. My brother had done it for 16 years. Mark and, was on 16 years? Yeah, four terms, four-year terms. So he did it... For, he did it for 16 years, and he chaired a lot of committees, uh, you know, the contracts and things like that, which is a time-consuming thing. And I had thought he was going to run again, and when we didn't, I said, well, because I've been out of things for a couple years now, and I said, well, I'll run for school committee. I'll do that, keep my finger in it, and I always had an interest, and we would always talk about things between the school and the city council and bang our heads together. and. Uh, so I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. So I was pretty much committed to school committee. That was my first choice. And uh, lo and behold, initially four, four sitting counselors decided not to run. And I thought that was a little bit excessive. And I always said from the past two years, I wouldn't do it again. But with four leaving, I said, I'll, I'll do it again. And I'd already pretty much committed to the uh, school committee, so that meets once, once a night, once a month rather. And, so uh, we, we could save uh, a little bit of time for somebody if you're the liaison for the school committee yeah, for the council. Yeah, I'll be there because I'll be at the meetings. Hey, so you get two votes. Yeah, I don't no, think no, so. No, no, wait a minute. The, the, the liaison doesn't vote on the no, city council. No, no, they just report back to the they council. So the I'd be council, the obvious. So you could do that. Could. I'd be the obvious one for that. So that's yeah. why I basically ran for two. Uh, I think I got the time. Uh, I've got the interest, so we'll uh, we'll see what happens. But there's, I guess there was some noise. I don't pay much attention to the online chatter. Some people said I you you can't do two because there's a conflict of interest because of the budget. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, though. You don't get paid for both jobs. Well, that's why you can run for both. But there's no yeah. conflict of interest from the budget. I mean, if I vote on uh, school budget as a school committee member. That's not the final. The final vote is on the city council, so it, it, it's irrelevant. And I, I talked to the uh, ethics commission uh, several times over a couple-day period, 
I had, I had checked our charter and state law, and I could find nothing that says I couldn't. So, so it was did. recommended I go to the state, called up after a couple of days of phone calls back and forth. They said you could, and the reason is because they're both not paid positions. Well, so, with council, you get a stipend. We do. We get paid. Well, they get more than a, they get well, more than that. Well, they get they. Yeah, we get thirteen or fifteen hundred a year. No, three thousand. Three thousand now. Yeah. I should have ran. Oh, forever. I should have yeah. ran. Jeez, I mean, three thousand. I could have used that. Pretty close. Yeah, I think you get. Uh, from what I remember, I think you get two fifty, and then you get a forty dollar stipend, uh, which they've always had. I yeah. guess they haven't yeah. had a raise in a long time, but uh, there's a forty dollar stipend, and that's for. Whatever you want to use it for. I always tried to donate money back to the city for whether they had fireworks or parades or different events. Well, so, thank uh, you. Thank you. That's nice. Yeah, yeah you should. You should yeah. give back. And, uh, and the school committee, they get anything at all? They don't, they, that's all volunteer, no. strictly volunteer. Yeah, that's no uh, elected, I, elected you know, position, but. Uh, yeah, you know, you don't and get I, paid. I talked to Mark too, and I said, you know, you're, you're doing this uh, for the love of the kids. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, That's it's nice, it and uh, you know, I know most of the people there. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah, and uh, so I'd like to see some changes that I. I have. like one change that you mentioned earlier, oh, a couple years ago when we were on together, that uh, you would like to see this the uh, school committee meetings mm -hmm. broadcast on this channel. Sure. Uh, not necessarily live. Yeah. But you know, recorded. And all it would take is nothing because we're already there. Yeah, you're there, yeah. but I mean, you have to have a, you know, somebody like Peter or Paul. Yeah, yeah. No, I, no I've talked about it with yeah. them, and it would be uh, uh, taped. <clears throat> but one thing that always bothered me with the school committee, and I had gone to a couple meetings because I had issues going way back to when they redid the Drury High School. I kind of led a group uh, opposed to that, and I had gone to some school committee meetings. And I was kind of uh, shocked about how underattended they were, because it was a, a difficult place. It was above the Berkshire Bank, and yeah. uh, it wasn't very in conducive to having people come and sit in on the uh, on the meetings. So I yeah. thought I'd like to see that televised, just so people have a better idea of what goes on and can see what goes on. And uh, I'll probably be talking before I get sworn in. I'd, I'd like to set a meeting up with the mayor and uh, just give him some of my thoughts on things and uh, see how he feels on my thoughts on things. Yeah, well, hey. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Have a meeting there. before you go to the oh, meeting yeah. because, you know. Sure. And that's our call-in number, 664-4408. If you want to talk live, and just let me remind you people out there, if you're going to call in, please turn your TV down and do not stand next to your TV when you're talking because... We'll get all sorts of weird signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds, not signs. You can't. Yeah, you know, I still don't know how many people know we're on again. Uh, well, they I know do, a few do they people. do commercials uh, during the day? Do they run? Uh, I think Paul runs. Paul, the, he runs. Yeah, he yeah. runs. Oh, okay. You know, let's talk about it tomorrow night or not tonight and so forth and so on. Plus, I, uh, I, uh, when I see people on the street, I just tell them we're back on. Mm -hmm. You know, because for a year they've been asking me when you're coming back, when you're coming back. And I said, well, I'm on Friday nights, you know, with Paul. And I said, yeah, but what about Bob? Yeah, and I yeah. said, well, Bob is Bob. He's got to make up his own mind. Uh, I can't change his mind. And yeah. when you called me and said, let's get back on the air, I jumped at the chance. Yeah, I did. We did. Well, I was 16 years with uh, Ron and Ronnie? then with you. Yeah. Probably about the same amount of time each year now. Just about, yeah. just about 15 years, yeah. yeah. We uh, were the number one show for a while. <laughs> yeah, 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 and I enjoyed it. Yeah. And, uh, we got all the trophies home to prove it. We got the yeah. big, big rewards. Oh, the big contracts yeah, the and contract. everything like that. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll have, uh, we'll get into a lot more of the, uh, it's like I was, when I was talking to John Baird, I told him I had a show, and I said, right now I don't have much to, to talk about on local uh, politics. I said, when, when you were in there, there was a lot to talk about. And Auchenbreak was in there. <laughs> I always had something to talk about. You know, whether it was good, bad, or indifferent, there was a lot of uh, interesting, interesting things going on. And 
Sometimes I agreed and sometimes I didn't agree. Hey, but you, uh, you can't agree with everything anybody says no. all the time. I don't care how good a friend you are. No. You can't. You can see some of what somebody's saying is good and the rest is bad. Or mm -hmm. all, it, it, it all depends upon the personality. Yeah. And if you that. agree with somebody every time and everything, it's your wife. Yeah. That's yeah. about it. Now, <laughs> we, uh, I, I don't have any big issues right now like i said i haven't gone to a council meeting or attended one kind of stayed out of it uh just read what's in the uh the newspapers but uh shortly another five or six weeks we'll get sworn in we'll we'll start again and we'll get a assigned to our committees which is always interesting are you um, looking for any favorable committee am i looking not i mean answer. i've served on most of them i've chaired uh, public safety general government uh, so that's interesting you know that's interesting but uh, I mean I've served a couple times on the finance that's a hard one finance uh, you actually have to do homework and oh, <laughs> you, wow. have, you have to study and I'm you have to you oh, go to a lot of meetings Councillor Harpin she did a wonderful yeah. she she did a terrific job tremendous job and from what I mean again I didn't watch him but I've heard it from several people and uh, read how it progressed you know and i berkshire and things like that when they had special meetings and uh she not only did a wonderful job i mean she's a wonderful person and she was a rookie counselor yeah, yeah and to come yeah. on this as a rookie counselor and to uh head the finance committee and finance committee is tough there's a lot of meetings we'd go you know meet with the school committee uh superintendent we'd meet with mccann uh mr brosman uh, meet with the mayor, have several public meetings, and you, you line item it, and uh, a lot of line items. But the interesting thing with the council, you can't add a thing to the budget, uh, but you can cut things to the budget. And it was funny because this past <coughs> cycle, the uh, they did have the issue, and the thing was with the lifeguards up at right, Fish Pond. Up, Fish Pond, right. So they wanted, the mayor I think had cut $15,000 out of the budget so they weren't going to have lifeguards up there. And several of the counselors were kind of opposed to that. And uh, what it basically came down to, the gist of it is they basically said, you know, you're going to fund the $15,000 or we're going to cut $15,000. <laughs> you know, I don't know what they were going to cut, but they could have said, hey, the mayor's office, we're cutting $15,000 uh, if you don't. And you couldn't put that towards the lifeguards, but it was but a common sense. You could, cut it. You, could yeah, cut it. you could yeah. cut it. You could cut it. And it was a it was a good thing. And, and on his behalf, he did move fifteen thousand. He, he did over to the lifeguards. He did. Yeah. He found it. He found it. And yeah. uh, so that's how politics is we, with the with the system we have. Uh, you got to use that threat. But that's the first time I've seen it uh, come to fruition, and it worked. It did. It worked the way it's supposed to work. You know. Uh, so. We'll and everybody was happy at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. And again, you don't realize, you know, I go to Fish Pond, my wife and I go on Wednesday nights, they have concert on the lake. And uh, I'll tell you, it's a great night. Uh, they do on Wednesday nights and uh, for a couple months. Yeah, I just open the windows on my house and sit there and have a beer and listen to them. Oh, boy, you sit out there. It's, the, it's nice. They have the concession stand open. You got the kayaks on the lake. You got people fishing. You got a lot of people up there throwing a blanket out with, you know, oh, yeah, have their yeah. kids up there in the playground or go swimming. Oh, a lot of people. Oh, you lot meet of people. a lot of people. A lot of people you know. A lot of people. So it's uh, one of those things that North Adam provides. Uh, you know, it's free, like they have the one down at the uh, the ball field, Joe Wolf Field, the concerts on Thursdays, I believe. Well, we're usually occupied on Thursdays, so we don't, we yeah. don't make that one. But the Wednesday is uh, it's, it's a nice uh, nice event. It's a beautiful place up there, and uh, we've been doing it for a number of years. So. Yeah. Sure, I got a canoe. So now you I'm got gonna, a canoe. I got a canoe. So now I'm gonna go out. You're gonna uh, go out there and listen to it out there. And yeah, paddle around. Yeah. yeah my, my son and my daughter-in-law go up there with their kayaks, yeah. and they go out and, you know. One day there's like 27 kayaks out there. It looks so cool. I mean, it's a beautiful backdrop, beautiful setting. The band's playing there. You look at the you look at the the water with all the kayaks. You know, the yellows, reds, blues, yeah. oranges. Oh yeah. Uh, it's yeah. really really pretty cool. And uh, if people haven't been up there, it's a different band every every week and uh it's worth it it's worth it it's a nice uh nice event you yeah, can either sit by yourself it's mostly local talent oh yeah because yeah. the bands are local talent that go yep. up there like uh oh, the one i know off the top of my head of course is pj murphy 
Uh, they're up there playing their Irish songs. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Oh, and you get the campers coming over. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, used, I used to like uh, Fill in the Blanks. They were good when they played up there. That Fill in the Blanks. Fill in the Blanks? P-H-I-L. Fill in the Blanks. Fill oh, okay. in the Blanks. All right. That's a new one on me. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Gary Pinson all played. Oh, Gary. Gary. I know, you know I've known Gary, Gary yeah. for 40 years. All right. <laughs> yep. yep. That was Fill in, yep. Fill in the Blanks. Yeah. Yeah. Gary was a bass player, right? I think. Yep. 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 Yeah. I remember they, they, they had then, a group when I was in high school, Manteve. Who? Manteve, that was the name of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then I think. Don Vasilio, who's passed away, and I think Bobby Burdick. And, uh, Bob Burdick. Gary Pinsonall. Uh, oh, those were, the, boy, those were the good old days. Have the old St. Joseph Annex, have the dances there. Uh huh. <clears throat> My old alma mater. That was uh, hard to believe how long ago it's been, you know? In, uh, yeah. Was that at the old school? Wow. I mean, we had we had classes there. We had, I forget what it was, maybe our fifth fifth and sixth grade. or fi I remember doing fifth grade in the old school. We'd have to oh, cross cool. the yeah. you know, cross the road. You had the gym over there. Uh, we used to have our musicals. And I yeah. still have, uh, I found a picture not too long ago, first grade, uh, for I'm a Yankee Duel Dandy. And that was the picture. And I remember... Buddy of mine in the class, Steve Marklin, and uh, I found the picture and I brought it to, to church because his father goes to St. Mass, you know, this was last year. So I oh, saw okay. him after Mass. I said, geez, I got something to show you. And uh, I don't know if I gave it to him to bring home to show his wife, but uh, yeah. And I, I see Steve's been up a couple times visiting, so it's good to see Steve. Uh, but yeah, those were the good old days, old St. Joe. Oh, yeah. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. But I wonder what's going to be done with that project over there. They bought that piece of land for $1.4 million, a group, and uh, I haven't heard much. What's going no, on? No, they haven't. I haven't heard anything. Uh, I talked to uh, the, the, the priest to find out Father Darius if he even knew anything was going on. and I don't think he would. It's, it's a, a moot situation. Yeah. The people own it, and uh, they're paying taxes on it, so yeah. we don't have to do well, the, the parish doesn't have to pay thirty-six thousand a year. No, no. That so that's the good news. Yeah, that was a debacle, and uh, by the previous administration, of course, we've gone over that. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but yeah, that was a uh, that was a problem. That was an issue. But again, it's a beautiful property. You still got the rectory there. You got the parking lot. You got the whole corner. You got the park up where the church was, and uh, you know, so that was bought from the diocese, I think, for one point four million. That was yeah. more than I thought they were going to get. Uh, but yeah, and that, that, it's a valuable uh, property. So, yeah, that actually leveled off our our uh, assessment to the yeah. diocese. Uh, yeah. we're talking about Saint Elizabeth Church. Yeah, uh, yeah, because they were responsible. Yeah, they were responsible. We, the Saint Saint Anthony became Saint Elizabeth Church, and then when Saint Francis closed, Saint Elizabeth had to pick up the taxes for that parcel of land, which was something like thirty-six thousand. Well, they didn't have to until Mayor Alcumbright most graciously said we had to. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't want to. Yeah, but know. yeah, I'm on the parish council too, so we just went through all that. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you took my spot in the parish yeah, council. I, yeah, yeah, well, big shoes to fill. Big shoes to fill. Oh man, I mean, yeah. I, did, I did eight years on the parish council. Yeah. I know you. You know, I don't want to go through this. You're only supposed to be allowed six years straight. Yeah. But I did eight years because I replaced somebody who, who left town, so I was never elected. I was a, yeah. I was a replacement. Yeah, this is, my, I think, my third year. Third year? Uh, yeah. So we'll uh, we'll let that play out. We've done a lot of nice things over there. The new father, yeah. Father Darius, done a great job. We've done a hey, lot he's of terrific. improvements. He is. He's great, I'll tell you. Yeah, he's always, he he's, he's energetic. Mm -hmm. Oh, know? he is. They said they can't energetic. keep up with him. Yeah. yeah. Those who don't know him, he's a... Not a real big fellow, but uh, boy, I'll tell you, can't follow the guy around. They say no. just chase him all around the place. He's all over. But great guy and some new blood and doing a nice job at the parish. Uh, and it's parish beginning there. to look really nice over there. Well, a lot of uh, capital improvements. The roof, the stairs, the, roof, the mean, doors, talking, the yeah, windows. You're, tra <laughs> you're talking, uh, which, how much did that roof cost? Oh. 400 I don't think it was that much, but it was a chunk of change. 280000 something? Yeah, a chunk uh, of change. And even the stairs, those were a fortune. The stairs were a fortune, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but you got to do it. You got to do it. So that's kind of what, uh, what's going on there. But uh, as far as the city, someone asked me, what do you want the 
see the city do, and uh, it's tough. I'd like to see the city move forward, of course, like everybody would. <clears throat> One thing I'd like to see, I guess, is because I'm from the West End and I go on walks and I belong to the club over there and I see people over in the West End a lot, over by the, the uh, Greylock School and by the airport. And one thing over there, it's uh, absolutely atrocious, are the sidewalks. Oh, really? Uh, they're falling apart, roots coming up through them. Uh, I mean, a lot of people walk over there, a lot of the elderly people. There's kids over there walking on the sidewalks, kids on their bikes. And uh, they're the old blacktop sidewalks, so they uh -huh. have a lifespan. But uh, when we get the... Uh, Chapter 90 money, I guess it is. Chapter 70 school, chapter 90 uh, for your equipment and roads. And they did a nice job up right of Monument, up East Main this year. Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, that's, uh, the road. That's, yeah. that's nice. But, you know, I, I'm totally against blacktop sidewalks because in the summertime, if it gets real hot, yeah. they're a problem. Oh, yeah. I and mean, I mean, it's probably triple the cost probably anyways to do the concrete, concrete yeah but, but they last triple long you go over in mass ave about four or five years ago they did most of mass ave and they had some blacktop sidewalks and they had concrete but they did the sidewalks all on the uh south side of mass ave and uh did a beautiful job but they look nice and uh, they last longer we're just coming back from ohio a couple of weeks ago my buddy and i and doing road work all over, but especially out in Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York. And what they're, you're doing out there on some of the highways is they're not blacktopping them. They're doing concrete. Concrete on the highway. Oh, yeah. man. You get on the, uh, on the roads, it's just yeah. like, it's awesome. And 76 again, is like that, I think. If I remember driving 76 yeah. from Philly out to... Noticeable, uh, noticeable yeah. difference. And that's the way they are in Europe. A lot of the big highways in Germany and the autobahns, and they're all concrete. Boy, they're nice. Again, they're pricey, but uh, you get what you pay for, and they last longer. Yeah, it just yeah. depends only, what you want to put you your money on. The only thing you get is that bump, bump every, what is it, every 60, whatever the span is, every 60 yards or something. Well, they like had it. Thump, thump, we thump, go to an Indian reservation, and that, the roads were old. And boy, I'll tell you. Where? Yeah. In Ohio? Probably Ohio. Yeah. Way out there. Maybe not. Might have been. It's way out west. Either very western New York or Ohio. Big um, casino. Uh, it's on oh, 86. Wait a minute. You went to the casino? Well, there's a big casino there. Oh, I thought you went hunting out there. We did, but you go right by the casino. We never oh, stopped you, in. You don't stop at the we casino? Uh, uh, I always <laughs> tell the guys, let's just stop in, take 50 bucks, go with blackjack table, put it all down, and you walk out, double your money, or just leave. You know, no one's no one's done it yet. But uh, we go out there, go out there twice. And we'll uh, have three times. We we'll to to scout out there. It's a fine, fine, fun state. Fine, yeah, fun I state. saw some of the photos where your friend sent me some photos. On, yep. Of the deer. And we the, did you know, deer. And, and it was, you know, it's not like they were small deer, but they were seven pointers, six pointers. Yeah. They're saying they're too small for us to shoot out yeah, here. Yeah, I've got. Multiple pictures, and it's fun, you yeah, know. I mean, One morning I saw four bucks, and I'll, within you, the, you see this room. an eight-pointer out here, my gosh, that's great. Hey, Bob shot a, an eight-pointer, wow. Out there, you see an eight-pointer walk by, you look at him, oh, and they you say, some, they yeah, got some there's some bigger one coming. Big, big deer. The other thing that's cool out there is the squirrels. <laughs> they got gray squirrels like we have. They have fox squirrels, fox squirrels out which there, are yeah. gray, but they have a very reddish tail. Then they have red squirrels. And then they have black squirrels. And I've had days where I've seen one of each. And it's just cool. Really? You know, see a black squirrel around here, it's pretty rare. But I do see them, especially over in Williamstown. Williamstown has them up on... Uh, Sand Spring Road's up yeah, that yeah, way, yeah, uh, yeah, North Woosick Road. Yeah. I've seen them. Uh, but uh, they have four different species of squirrel, different color. And to see them all in the same morning, uh, that's kind of that's kind of cool. But we like Ohio. We like Ohio. Very conservative state. Uh, during the last election, I was very happy to be out there. I'd go out there and I had, <laughs> I'd be here and get beaten up on Trump. And I'd go out there and it would be 20 to 1 Trump for Clinton signs. And you'd feel so good when I was out there. And uh, it's just amazing in different parts of the country how different, uh, you know, we're truly a melting pot, but it's so, so different. 
I can re I can remember uh, just when you said something about being out. There, I can remember wanting to ask you a question about one of the shows or who was coming on or something, and I dialed up your 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 cell phone, mm -hmm. and all I got was what? Hey Bob, who are you having on tomorrow when you uh, the show next week? Who's going to be the guest over there? Shh, I don't know. What's the matter? You got a call? No, I'm up in the blind. I'm hunting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were up there hunting. I didn't even know you were out in Ohio. Yeah, I, I can remember a couple when I was running for mayor one time. <laughs> I was uh, up to camp with a friend. We were hunting. And all of a sudden, my phone starts. So I answered, and it was John Barrett. What are you doing? Hope you're studying. You better not be hunting. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not hunting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, these things are a curse. And again, I still, I don't email. I very rarely text. I don't answer most phone calls because it's off. Or, geez, I forgot it the other day. And it was four or five calls, you know, back, you know. So I have it more for my convenience. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I use mine for. Yeah. No, and they, I don't have a good one like that. I got a regular old fashioned flip phone. Where but I did too. And ah. this, 39 bucks. 39 bucks, okay. I had the flip phone. What you could do on this is unbelievable for the same. It was cheaper. It Hello, was cheaper. Connect me to, um, yeah. yeah. I can't do that with this. this. You can. You can talk to it. It talks back. We got lost in Ohio. And my brother in law, I said, Mike, get this phone because I know when you go to Google, you can find roads. And yeah. oh, we yeah. got the roads we were on. And then he goes, after 10 minutes of giving me directions, or you just missed it, he said, Hey, there's something moving on this. And that was us, of course. And you were following it. Yeah. yeah. And he goes, what's start mean? I said, push the button. All of a sudden, then you can talk to it. Hello, let's talk about it. Hi, Ed. Hello there. How are you? I'm trying to behave. It's Chris. I got a question. Yes. Um, do you know, I missed the paper for the 14th. Do you know anything about Johnson School? Was yeah. it Malaysia that purchased it? Yes. Hi, Bob. Yes, hello. Yes, yes, David uh, purchased it. In fact, I, I talked to David this past Friday evening, and I asked him how's it going, and he's, he's told me that the plans are almost laid out, that it is, it is a go. Yeah. So. Good. Hello? Any chance? You're next, next to the TV, or? Yeah. Uh, no, the TV is lower. I'm on the phone. Okay. Getting a lot of feedback. Feedback, a lot of feedback out there. Well, the, the, anyway. television, uh, the television's off. Okay. Uh, I was wondering, what, how did they come up with the name Amity Square Apartments? Come up with the name what? Amity Square Apartments. That's what he's going to name it. I don't know. I, I just talked to David 40 minutes ago, and uh, I had a something in mind. He said, I'm booked up for the next three years, but I don't know how, what... Uh, yeah, ask him about the name, because somebody mm -hmm. told me they, they were going to call it Amity Square Apartments. Mm -hmm. And I took the neighborhood course with Kathy Keezer, Natalie Kane, and Al, and all of them, to learn how to organize my neighborhood, and I called my neighborhood, because I'm on... I, I, took over the uh, school, Katie, a part of North Street when I did my neighborhood. Yep. And I called it Amity Square. Well, Paul would know. He's Amity the Square is the name of the neighborhood. That's the name of the neighborhood. neighborhood. Is that how he got the name? That's Amity what Square? Paul says, and Paul's a local historian. That's the historical name of that neighborhood. Yeah, that's me. Yep. I'm yep. the organizer. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's done that in all his projects, brought yeah, back. Yeah, so yep. how did he come... How did um, Lazy come up with the name Amity? That was the historic name of that neighborhood, Amity. Oh, okay, Amity now I got the answer. Thank Am you. It was Amity Square, I guess they used to call it. Yes, that's yep. what I called it. That's yep. what I named it. Yep, so that's, All right. Thank that's you. why he did. Yep. Have a good one. You too. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Yep. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, yeah that, that's a building that uh, North Adams was still using for, uh, for schools, and they used the lower floors. The, the top floors were in uh, really bad shape and uh, for the city to go in there and fix that was just very very cost prohibitive uh, 
go for school funding on it. I mean, a couple of years ago, I know they went for they went for school funding for Greylock School, and uh, they didn't get it. So it's tough to get, and uh, the building has become very obsolete. And anybody who has, I mean, I cannot sing the praises of Dave Marese, uh more profoundly because when he does something, he does it right. He does it right. He does, does it, it right the first time. Does it with his own money doesn't ask for grants, doesn't go uh, looking for outside help. He has his own people. He started off kind of small. And uh, I mean, the projects he's done around here is amazing. And this project, it can be his first, it'll, definitely will be first class. And if you have any doubt on what his projects look like, uh, take go over to NORAD Mill and uh, go over there and he's got a little grinder shop, sub shop, yeah, in for, there. maybe you put that in for the people who for work there. For people that work there, yeah. Because there's like some 40 some odd shops there. And people, 48. And, yeah, and people would have to go out. It's unbelievable. The quality the of the work. Call in. Yeah. Qu you know, the quality work and the people who've gone over there, the tenants, uh, yeah. Yeah. how accommodating he was. You know, it's not like this is what you got. What do you need? And he would build it for them. You know, the, the build it and they will come truly is uh, truly true. Uh, but to go over and just take a, take a ride. You know, some lunchtime, go over there, and he's got the little little uh, sandwich shop there. And I think for someone was telling me they went over to get an overstuffed sandwich, bag of chips, and a Coke for eight bucks, you know. Hey. And take a, take a walk around in there and uh, see the diversity <clears throat> of what's in there. And I remember when he got it going, probably a year or so ago, he came out, and some people were offended that that's the new Main Street. Well, well I'll tell you. It is. <clears throat> Excuse me. With the amount of stuff going on in there, I mean, it's only a matter of time before they put a, a drive-up bank over there, or uh, who knows what. But he's done an absolute amazing job. And if you look at this city, you know, I'm 63, and I remember when Spragues was booming, and I remember downtown and the busy Thursday nights. But what we were left with was a bunch of mills, and it was bleak, and it was desolate. And you uh, look around now, you know, like it or not, Mass Mocha, I mean, it's awesome. It's awesome what they've done with those buildings. You look at the uh, NORAD mill, what's been done with that, that's absolutely phenomenal. You look at Eric Rudd, what Eric, he's done, you yeah. know, a decade ago, took a bunch of uh, aging mills and made studio apartments, and people from all over the country come in there, and they're paying. 150 to 250 thousand dollars for these live-in artist units. Uh, I mean, who would have ever thought that? And then you got the other side on the other side of the street, which something I'd probably like to see looked into of what's going to be done there. I know they well, took the borders. It's been like that for years. It has, but I know they've taken out the the structures on that roof. So you basically, you have a, geez, I don't know, 300 foot long wall, brick wall. Yeah. And it would just seem well, to me uh, if you had a certain type of a wind <clears throat> coming out of, you know. I don't know if there, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if there's any <clears throat> any uh, structures in there holding the wall up. There's not much. You're looking at parking lot and a lot of the beams and the, the yeah, girders. Yeah, no, but I mean, the, I don't know if you put anything in there to hold up. I know once uh, Nick <clears throat> Mantello did took, a drone. His, yep. Yeah, his drone and went over there and took pictures. And I was surprised the amount of boats and cars and trailers that are being housed there during during the months, during the year. Yeah, but uh, you know, then the the other big uh, mill, NORAD mill, and uh, what can I say? I mean, I, I've got some issues with that. I've got some issues I don't know, because I had been on a council, but I was always, I was always for TIFFs and very pro TIFFs. <clears throat> and I think I voted in my 10 years on the council, maybe for three, maybe four TIFFs. In uh, the last cycle, I was a little bit concerned about if the criteria was being met for TIFFs, because that's usually an ascending tax rate. They give them a tax break the first year, maybe pay nothing or 20%. Then over five years, it goes up 20% until you get your final. I, I don't think he got a TIFF on that, on NORAD. I'm not sure. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, he did. Sure oh, no, he did. absolutely. I don't think he got not. one on anything. Oh, he never on got the, a tip. On the Chestnut Street? He never got tips. He has a, uh, uh, well, <clears throat> I had an issue with the condos on Chestnut Street? Yeah, you know, David's never got a, got no. a tip. 
No, but he, they he got, got a tip. I don't think he looks for it. He doesn't. But that's no. why I was saying they got the the, the Greylock one. I mean, they got <clears> like two million dollars or one point three million for a parking lot. Uh, yeah, that's pretty darn nice, and it's quite a nice parking lot. It is a parking lot, but then they close off the parking for the uh, Greylock Club, which has been over there since you were a little puppy. I'm a Greylock Club member, and I understand why they did it. It's business. They had a chances to buy that a long time ago, the yeah. park, and now they got it on the other side. It's their, it's their building. It's their property. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I see both sides, but I don't disagree with them. But my issue when, uh, three years ago, uh, during the Alcabright administration, I asked mayor about it, and uh, things weren't met the way they were supposedly written up, but there was different things done to accommodate. But I did ask for every year uh, that the council got a packet and an update on all the TIFs. And I don't know if that's been done the last two years, and I know that mill, that TIF probably is running out or is about to run out. So. Is that on Greylock Works? Greylock Works. It's a five-year. <clears throat> it's probably pretty close to five-year. But they've done, I've been in there for several functions, and uh, they just sold two units in there for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And uh, I don't know. I just saw the real estate transaction. So i gotta, I got to look into that because. What do you mean they sold two units? Two there? units, probably for businesses to come in. Oh, they can sell whatever they want. They can sell, they can sell condominiums in there if they want that's what it's for. I mean, you gotta put people in there and sell it or rent it. And, uh, but uh, I'm just concerned if the TIFs uh, are met. And it, it may be too late on that one, but uh, I've always liked to uh, keep updated on that, just for my own knowledge. And you give these things and the people should be accountable. And maybe they have, and uh, that'd be good. But that just goes to show North Down, that people kind of forget about what's happened over the years with these big mills. Uh, we had our Windsor Mill, which was sold, potentially. And uh, that's another thing with the city. They, I think they're a little bit slack when we, because I was one, one of the ones that approved that when that came up three years ago. We had a developer to come in, great plans, great developer, solid. And uh, went on for a number of years, and then they backed out. So you lost all that revenue on that. Uh, I'd like to see these purchase and sale agreements close within 60 or 90 days. In other words, you buy it. And the same thing happened down in the, the city yard, the gravel bank. Same you know, yeah. That came in, that was, that was, the bid was taken, and it went for a couple of years, and then they said, well, we're going to move to Adams, and they didn't want it anymore. Uh, city yard was much the same way. They just started, and that was because uh, the mayor, the last time uh, came up, they wanted an extension. And I was hoping he'd say no, and he did say no. And uh, now they're working on that and tearing that down. So Now, what about uh, seeing now that you're a counselor, what about Heritage Park? What, well, what's I'm happening a, down there? I'm not a counselor. I'm not privy to well, anything you, yet. Well, then I can ask you personally, what the heck's going on, Bob, with the city? That was a debacle from years ago when this we did our TV show right down there. Yeah. Uh, that was going to be, what, the Cheese Factory or something? The Cheese Factory. You know, they came in, all these great plans, and we were kind of pushed out. And, uh, again, that's past well, administration. Well, yeah, not only us were pushed out. There was a few. Everybody. Everybody was pushed out. Historical Society. Yeah. Uh, and there was other people in there. They didn't keep up the property. Uh, then we got pushed out because of these great plans that were going to happen down there. And uh, the mayor was crying how run down it was. He didn't have money. And I know... This organization, I believe, paid eighteen thousand dollars a year in rent. And I remember talking to him. I said, "Mary, you yeah. said you got no money to fix stuff. You threw us out. You lost eighteen thousand dollars in rent, and everything fell through." Yeah, the eighteen thousand dollars of rent. Not too much of that was put back into Heritage Park. It was allocated to the general <clears throat> fund, which everybody tapped into. Oh, none of nothing was you know, put I, into I would that like park. To, I, I would like see to see item lines <clears throat> if. Let's take the uh, campground, Windsor Lake Campground. Mm -hmm. I would like to see where you go on and there's a line item, Windsor Lake Campground, $38,000 for it for the year, and you give them $38,000 to run that campground. All the money that comes in gets put back into that account. And at yeah. the end of the year, when everything is done, then you can take that money and put it into the general fund. But you can't take the money that's coming in, putting it in the general fund, and then the people running the campground are saying, 
but we've got to put water in over here. Well, you don't have the money to do it. Yeah, no, they, they need some capital improvements, but that's, that does generate a good revenue. It does, uh, up it does. There. Uh, it's yeah. pretty booked up, and uh, so they have revenue. But the, uh, I've said this before on the show, I've had family members who had campers, and uh, I'm not a camper, but when we'd go around to visit them, you'd go to some of these different campgrounds, and boy, they were spectacular. Spectacular. Then you go up to ours, and it was a little bit run down. The showers weren't good. Uh, the roadway wasn't good. The sites weren't kept up. Yeah, you got to put the uh, money into it, back and, into it. Yeah, and you can, that, that is one thing I like to look into when, uh, as far as the city as a revenue generator. Uh, it brings a lot of people into the city, and uh, it should be beautiful, beautiful. If you got to spend some <laughs> money, fine, but it does, it does generate revenue. And while we're talking about things like that, I've often wondered, these people that rent out their trailers that are up there or their houses or their camps and stuff for, you know, air, air bed, uh, Airbnb, air, Airbnb. All right. And, and I've, I've talked to, uh, I've talked to people at city hall and said, do they pay the regular tax that the hotel is paying? Mm -hmm. I don't get a straight no. answer. No. I don't get a straight answer. No. I mean, there's legislation and uh, trying to be put through, I believe, in this state and actually all around the country has become a big issue. It's kind of, it was kind of like the, the Uber, Lyft cars versus taxis. Taxis, yeah. Where the taxis had to pay for medallion and, you know, certain things with the city where these other groups came in and said, you know, we're Uber and we don't hire anybody. They're private contractors and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Times are changing and governments and cities have to be up to speed, but it would, I mean, it's only fair uh, if you're renting out your house or your apartment or your trailer uh, to somebody that. Yeah, because if you own an apartment house, say you own uh, a four apartment house, right? A speculation, you mm -hmm. speculate, you buy a house and fix it up, you're gonna rent four apartments. Well, the first thing you have to do is you, the uh, building inspector has to come in and do an inspection. CO, and, yeah. You know, it's $125 a, an apartment or something <clears> like that. Well, if you're renting out to somebody, they come in for the week, they come in for a concert or something, they rent for the weekend, and they leave, and the city doesn't even know about it. Never mind, you collect the taxes. Yeah. They don't even know about it. Yeah, it's a, and it's, I mean, if I had a four-unit apartment house downtown, I mean, I don't think I'd even rent it out for the locals to, to live in. I mean, I'd rent it out for 250 350 a night especially on weekends, even more on yeah. concert night, and you make more money uh, you would, doing yeah. that. But yeah. yeah uh, but, but then you, you know, you're by think, passing all the taxes and Yeah, I mean, I think the state's gonna step in, we're gonna step in on that and- uh, I, I, I talked to- uh, It's hard, Dave hard to get away from it. One time and the state is on, on to things like that. And I think Charlie Baker said that uh, they're gonna step in and do something on that there, but who knows? We'll see. Maybe well, John can do something. Well, I mean, I, I don't. I'm not even. I don't even know if it's bad. I mean, it's free, free enterprise, and the government. I guess no matter what they want it, they always want their nickel. Uh, they want to get something out of it, you know. Well, I have to pay taxes on my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the person pays his taxes on his building. It's just who he has there. Uh, you know, and, and it could be. I could think it'd be. You know, if you go online and rent, and I know people who do, and they, it's amazing what they do. Oh yeah, uh, they'll yeah. have a weekend. It's amazing what they get for seven hundred dollars for a weekend. You know, they'll come in for four days. Four days, you know, yeah. Eight, well, I eight had people friends. get together and they rent it and they have a good time. And I had friends from Kansas who come out that wanted to rent a place and it was eleven hundred dollars for the week. Yeah. Actually, for four days, eleven hundred dollars for four days, and it was four young ladies, and uh, uh, my daughter said, "Well, you can have my house for nothing." Mm -hmm because she grew up with them yeah so well again years ago not all that many i knew i knew a fellow who, who could have rented his house out for a week and i'm not sure if, what festival it was but fifteen hundred dollars yeah oh yeah fifteen hundred bucks and his wife said no and i i wouldn't do mine for 50 i wouldn't want somebody in it and but uh, the wife said no but he said man fifteen hundred dollars for you know five days or whatever they're going to be here yeah so it's a you know it's a good market but what are you going to do what are you gonna do? So there'll be uh, there'll be some issues, but I'll be excited to see what uh, committees I get on. Uh, I don't know who is even the dynamics of the council. 
I've talked to most of them. Saw one or two of them tonight uh, over at John's Affair. And uh, I heard uh, Jason LaForest was going to go for president. President, that's what I heard, too. <laughs> and I did tell him at a, one of our events, I said, if you do go for the uh, president, I'll back you. Not looking for anything. And I almost, to be honest, I would almost not want to be a chair of anything. Uh, actually, on the council now, I mean, Keith is obviously the senior counselor, but I think it'd be me and Lisa with 10 years experience. But I could do without being a chair. Chair. You know. yeah. Chairs work, got a lot of notes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if I had someone said, if he said you can be on two, public safety be obvious because I've been involved in public safety all my adult life. And uh, I might, uh, finance, I always thought it was interesting. I, I enjoyed that. But again, it's, uh, I can remember I was on it with Al Martin one or two times and uh, Dick Hawkenbright. And I said, boy, this is work. You know, <laughs> you go to a meeting and holy cow. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting stuff to see how things actually work and how much things cost. And then on the school committee, I don't know uh, what, I know they have the, uh, you know, budgets. They have the union contracts. I don't know when they're up for the school contracts, but that can be pretty all-encompassing. I have been involved in union contracts before, and they, for the most part, are a whole lot of no fun. I remember my first union negotiation meeting. First meeting, the number one topic, we sat down. They had their negotiators. We had ours, and there was lawyers. And they said, okay, we're, right now we're going to decide on where we're going to sit. Oh, no, 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 no. We're like, going to sit in the big chairs. No, where we're going to sit. I mean, it was that yeah. ticky-tack where, you know, you people will be on this side of the table, we'll be on this side. Of the, you got to negotiate that. I'm like, hey, I don't care where I sit, you know. But uh, that's when I kind of knew it's like, man, rut row. It's, yeah, not, it's, uh, it's just done. Them. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, we have a meeting uh, tomorrow night. Yep. Yeah, another meeting tomorrow we do. night. We do. I had a meeting last night. I got a... Tonight, I've had a couple things. Yeah, it's been a busy week, busy week. My poor wife, uh, she puts up with it, and uh, God bless her. She's an angel. She is. Put up with the... the same with mine, you know. And, well. But your wife allows you to run for these things. My, my wife does not want me to get involved, and I can see her point. Well, maybe she should run. No, I can see her point. You want to run? No, Joan, you Come don't on, want Joan, to run. Come on, Joan. Joan, Joan, <laughs> talk to me after church. We'll talk about it. Maybe you want to run. <laughs> no, she doesn't want to run. But uh, couch, no. it's fun. <laughs> For the most part, it is. It's no, fun. I, can, I can see her because uh, uh, I got involved before with different things, and, and I mean, I went a tunnel vision. This is what I was doing, and that, you know, that mm -hmm. took priority over everything. And then I sat back and said, wow, you know, family first. Oh, you, I mean, you, you things know, can be... Uh, you could get, I got on the other side of yep. it, and I had to be waking up, woken up. You can get off of say, consuming. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, I know, I'm like you. You devote yourself to something. You get on a committee, you get on something, you, you devote yourself to that, you know? Yeah, and it, again, it, I, I, I always, always took being a counselor very seriously. Yeah, you know. You gotta. You know, I just did, and uh, I, I truly enjoyed it, even though I had a lot of, there's some difficult times, but you got to uh, stick to your guns. Uh, I know a lot of politicians these days, even from the lowest form to the highest form, they, uh, whatever way the wind blows, you know, you can look at that in the, in the politics today. And uh, sometimes it's, it can be tough to stand Stand alone and stand on your beliefs, but uh, so now we're less than ten minutes. Yeah, I'm not a big compromiser. You know, maybe I should be more of a compromiser, but uh, I'm not. So. So now we can throw the question out because you know we don't have time. We'll be off the air shortly. So, you've been watching the impeachment hearings. Oh. <laughs> the I'm I'm telling you. <laughs> I knew I could. I, I knew you got it there. I, 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 uh, Bob's view on the impeachment hearings. Oh, I Lord. just cannot. For one thing, 
I want to thank all you Democrats because this Donald Trump is in. These are the most ridiculous things, and I cannot believe the stuff I'm hearing from career Democrats, intelligent people. Well, you you got wait a minute now. You 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 know they are intelligent, but sometimes they don't know what they're talking about. When I when you talk about the people, I'm not, not talking just about Democrats. And I'm I was I was looking whole. for something, and I'm going to find the paper, and it was something that was written a while ago, and the title of it was Useful Idiots, and I'm going to have it, I'm going to find it, and I'm going to read it on the air. But Donald Trump, everyone knows, love him. He's a business guy. Republicans don't like him. Democrats don't like him. And the deep state truly hates him. Now, people don't, most people don't know what the deep state is, but the deep state is all the politicians that have been there 20, 30 years, who've worked inside Washington, who've worked in embassies, who've kind of the lower level people who run the country. Trump got in there, and when he said drain the swamp, he was, in my opinion, he was affecting not just Democrats, but Republicans. For the most part, and I say this and I say it truthfully, most politicians, career politicians, are crooks. And if you want to look at insurance plans or any number of things, the stuff they do. Now, I've got some friends who are very liberal and we get along great and we talk and we discuss and we argue, but we're still friends. And there's a many, many, many people who I've talked to who are very, very bitter. And it's amazing, the liberals who preach tolerance of how tolerant everyone should be, whether it be on, on the, the gay rights, on abortions, on the walls, on immigrants, are the least tolerant people. When you come against them, they'll scream at you, they'll call you a racist, they call you a Nazi, and you see it all the time, and that is the most ignorant thing I can ever imagine. I didn't go through World War II and the Holocaust, but when these people are as ignorant as they are, comparing Trump to Hitler, it's beyond me. And I've got a good friend who I see every week, and we discuss every week what goes on, and he'll say, boy, I watched, you know, I was watching this and this is, he's done. I'm saying, Mike, all I've asked you for the past four months is to watch one hour of Fox News. I don't care if you watch a half hour on Monday and a half hour on Friday. Just listen to another point of view. So many of you people that I've gotten these discussions with don't even look at the other side. I watch Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, now we're nowhere near as much as I used to. But when you watch these two newses and see how opposite it is. Now, remember back, just, just coming to my mind, remember when Trump was running for president and he said, they're spying on me. And everybody laughed, the press jumped on him, made fun of him. Lo and behold, wasn't it funny? <laughs> they were. He has done so many things for this country. but. They're getting him on this, I, I call it technicality, and he's not going to be impeached. He's not going to be impeached. You know the House is. will, the Senate won't. It's a waste of time. You've helped us all out. It's a bunch of bull. The Senate already said that if it gets oh, past the House, it's dead. Well, we control it anyways, but it's, it's not going to happen. But Adam Schiff, these are like the McCarthy hearings. So they run hearings against Trump where you can't ask questions. You can't challenge. I mean, that's American way. That shows how bad it is. They are so afraid of Donald Trump. They've had, I heard this a few weeks ago, they've had 12 different things they've brought on Donald Trump since he's been president. And actually, before he was president, they were talking about impeaching him, before he was sworn in. 12 different things, and every one of them has failed. 
Remember that Mueller report? Boy, that's it. And they, they said, we got the evidence and blah, blah, blah. They spent two and a half years, spent $25 million, and they couldn't get nothing. They couldn't get nothing. And, and uh, just few people out there who think that we're pro-Republican, both I know I am and I believe that Bob is also unenrolled. I mean, we're neither Democrat nor Republican. Oh, I'm independent. We're, well, you're unenrolled. Independent yeah. is the Communist Party, I believe. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, you know, we look at both sides of the coin. And well, how? I know. I, I, I was Republican. I was Republican until during the Trump administration. I, mean, I gave money. I got the picture by the president signed and the whole bit. And I was big until Ryan, once they won, they had this big health care plan they talked about for years. They didn't have nothing. A bunch of freaking liars. They're all in it together. So Trump is in there disturbing it all, breaking it up. But what? people don't realize in this hearing is when you're the president you set the policy these lower these this colonel and these other people they don't set policy they're at the whim of the president the president sets policy the Adam shift what he's doing is gonna backfire what I'm telling you why it amazed me when Biden six months ago eight months ago was talking about going over to, to over there talking about having a special uh, prosecutor that was investigating his son fired. I want him fired. I'm getting on the jet plane in six hours. I want him fired or you're not going to get a billion dollars in aid. The person who he was talking to said, well, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. And he said, call Osama. Call, call him right now and check. Six hours later when he flew out, they got the billion dollars. Talk about a quid pro quo. And he bragged about it. Not one Democrat, not one Republican brought that up to say, hey, what's going on here? Plus, what people don't know is they got $7 billion, billion dollars. Nobody knows where it is. Nobody's accountable for it. And I, what, why do you think you would give Biden a free pass when he does this just because he's running for president. Now the president is, is at fault. If you're the president of the United States and you see something that's not getting investigated, I think he should call up. And what, what nailed them, which if, is when they asked, did you make this call? Call was made. They thought they had him. They're going to nail him. He wasn't going to get the transcript. He said, no, I'll give you the call. Here's the, here's the transcript. Here it is. They were shocked. Yep. They got the transcript. There is no mention of a quid pro pro. And the people that were standing next to him said, oh, yeah, from what I heard. Speculation and innuendo. Eh, moto, curly, and curly, curly. People, <laughs> these, these people that had up there, some of them are second and third Wait, hand. We, I heard this, I heard that. We got 15, 15 seconds. 15 seconds. I'll tell you, it goes by Two fast. Weeks. Be Two back weeks. here again. So you can we'll have a nice Thanksgiving. This. Nice Thanksgiving to everybody yes, out there. Yes, everybody enjoy Thanksgiving. Play it safe out there. So he got me going on this. I could have gone another half hour. Uh, but I waited till 10 minutes because I know you would take it all. Uh.